Bonjour, hello and welcome to Max Mountain World. Bonjour, hello. Today I'm over in the Devil Wee Massif, the next mountain range over from home. Roughly the same altitude, I'm at 1,766 metres altitude here. Uh, it's not much different from where I live, <laughs> altitude wise, but totally different. Here is nature. Here is just one of my favourite places on the planet. Now, before I continue, I'm going to say this is going to present so many challenges, both visually and audio. The The wind gusting is incredible. It nearly blew me off, off the top of this bit earlier. It, and then it goes calm. So I'm going to have to try and time stuff. I've been trying to time stuff with the wildlife thing. Not so easy to do. <laughs> Um, the shots of the marmots there, I had to wait about an hour and ten minutes or so to uh, to catch them and they're so wary and whilst I was doing so this little birdie came down and I managed to catch him the minute I actually went like that, whoop, gone so uh, very lucky to catch that stuff but anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little sort of show around a 360 from above me here, which is actually 1800 metres, um, the same as where I live. And then I'm going to explain why I'm here and what I'm doing. So, watch this. This, this is a pretty good one. I've been looking forward to this uh, for, uh, for a while. This is Friday, the last day of... Uh, the Covid situation for me, I'm back to work on Monday uh, Okay, so I've got Saturday, Sunday, but weekend off is normal for me off season So I thought I'd do a day like today. I hoped that the weather was going to be okay. It's not too bad But a bit of light, the, the very strong winds, clouds flying past, it gets light, it gets dark as you can probably see a few spots of rain from time to time and Yeah it's gusty, uh, it goes really calm, and then boof, it's, it's blowing the car around and everything. So, uh, yeah, watch this. I'm going to do a tour around a 360, and uh, forgive me if the noise or the video goes a bit wonky. I'll try and accommodate that in the edit. So, here goes. And straight ahead of me here is that's about... A kilometre and a half from where I've just pointed and I can see that I used to be able to see that from where I lived from out my living room window or my dining room window or kitchen window whatever and one time I saw that completely avalanche naturally 
down. Now the top of there to down to beyond this sort of grassy bit where it disappears behind is probably about a four or five hundred meter drop. Now heading round left here there's all these uh, shale areas and the rock of this mountain behind us and you can see some of the um, caves and things. Now Devil Wee Massif is well known for its caves. Apparently there's over 300 you can access easily. And I'll just head round a bit more over to the other side of the Devil Wee Massif. The Park Gazette is actually over the other side. Now just looking over getting a bit of wind up so speak to the camera. I'm going to have to carry this one on in a second. There's a gusty wind coming up. No, it's not. Okay, so uh, straight ahead of us, uh, behind is the west of the Park des Ecran. I'm going to pause this. I thought I was going to get a cam bit in the wind there, but no such luck. Anyway, let's have a wee look down here. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, dear. Straight ahead there, I'm um, zoomed in, is the ski station of Super Devil Wee where I used to live. And across to the right there is the actual buildings I used to live. Whoa! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and as the wind dies, I'm still managed to stand up here, although only just. And let's see if I can get the opportunity to have a wee look back down here again. So, yeah. The buildings across here, I'm going to put an arrow to indicate where I used to live on this. If I can hold this steady enough on the zoom in the wind. But that little collection of buildings is where I used to live. So looking straight ahead of us, all the, all the ski areas up to the left, behind this sort of lighter coloured mountain here. And I have actually skied once down this side of it which was quite, a, quite an interesting experience. Now, looking further over, I'll come back to this in a second, but just looking up above, we can see there's a pylon up there. Now that is a, a big lift system. It's not open to the public, it serves um, uh, an observatory up there, the Plateau de Bure up there. Um, there's six, maybe more now, I don't know, it's been a while since I was up there, but there's six huge, massive uh, um, dome things, you know, sort of satellites and things or whatever. It's, uh, I'll, I'll put a link into that, it's the IRAM, IRAM um, observatory up there. Now, just heading round to the left, probably one of the most photographed mountains in the Alps is the Peak de Bure, where I, I, I managed to catch earlier a, a glider uh, just disappearing off behind it. Now from the top to bottom there, it actually goes down um, behind here. This area here is about 2,300 metres, which is about, uh, about, about four or five hundred metres above me here, but it goes down behind. There's a valley down behind. Three sides of the Peak de Bure have an 800 metre drop. The one facing us here, the one to the side and behind it there as well. And I've been up there once, pretty spectacular place up the top there. And uh, I'll put in a photograph now of me about 10 years ago. <laughs> um, the, there was a craze called planking, where you would photograph yourself lying down on something. I've actually got a photograph of myself planking on top of that. I'll put that in, uh, actually not back then, but now. So anyway, heading round, this drops down below me here. This is where I nearly got blown off earlier. If I just walk to the, to the edge, you can see it's, yeah, I don't want to go too close to that because uh, the wind's getting up a bit again. You can see the tracks and paths at the bottom here below me where these are the recognised walking routes and things. And up behind, the, uh, it's difficult for the camera to catch this all, so I'll do a bit of zoomed in stuff and see how I can actually catch it. Still a bit of snow on there. And 
just past the Peak de Bure, which is absolutely huge. It's about a kilometre in altitude above where I'm standing and up behind the various other mountains at the sides of the Plateau de Bure. Up there is an area where there's mountain goats. I had hoped to go up there but in this weather it would just be too risky. And I have been scanning with the camera on full zoom but I've not managed to find any. So uh, that will be a video some other time. And just heading back round, you can see the sun's just coming out over there, but that'll soon disappear. And you can actually see the speed of the clouds, I hope, <laughs> um, as this lot is actually blasting around. It's incredible. Just difficult to catch this on camera, like I say, but again, just looking ahead here, you can see the speed at which the clouds are passing, hopefully. I would recommend that this video is watched on as large a screen as possible. And over ahead of us is uh, another mountain range that separates the Devil Wee mountain range from Isère. Now, across to the left here, just in the distance uh, there, is the highest peak in the Devil Wee Massif, which is uh, Grand Ferrand. And right next to it, to the right, is Petit Ferrand. They're both slightly higher than the Peak de Bure, which is the third highest in the, in the mountain range here. So, down here, just heading back round. San Etienne on Devil Wee is just down beyond there. That's where all the motorbike stunt event things have been happening. And again, I'm going to just zoom in, catch these mountains, catch just the terrain. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful place. Even if it is It's getting up again. So, what's this building about? Now, this is actually a refuge. It's an unmanned refuge. It's uh, a place where if you're up here, whatever time of year, and you have problems, you can actually shelter in here. And it's actually used quite often by the shepherds, the farmers, when uh, they're up. And I've seen them up this previous place where I talked at 2300 metres. I've seen them up there with flocks of two, 300 sheep and stuff. Now this is a bit weather-worn, but this is the actual Caban du Vallon Dan. Now it says plural there. Altitude 1766 metres. The previous stick I started this frame in uh, it says 1760 and Anne is singular, but that happens quite often in, in the French language. So, here's the building here. It's permanently open. And let's go and have a wee look inside. Now, when I do this, I'm going to switch to head mount because I'll explain why as I do it. It's open. So, just heading in here. Pretty dark. You probably saw in previous shots there that uh, we've got the shutters closed. So let's get the shutters open and get some light in the subject. Et voila! Daylight! So just head out. I'm going to pin back these uh, shutters just in case the wind gets up and blows them and damages them. Put the hook on to hold them in place. Sit there, put the hook on, and that's held in place. I need to go back in and shut these windows now as well. Yeah, so this is the building. So the main door, this front door, is actually removable just by lifting that up, and there we go. That's obviously the shutters and that are for protecting it when the, when the weather gets a bit more mental. So let's have a wee look around here. In here it's, it's been prepared by people. A lot of people have done things like I've been using this saw this morning. I've been bringing up wood. I'm going to be bringing up more after I've finished the video. And the saw is there for chopping up the larger bits of wood. People have left some stools kindling wood, the little branches and stuff, paper, cardboard and we've got a stove here 
which, uh, yeah, could do a bit of a clean, but it's just pretty good as it is. And uh, someone's even left a kettle, an old pot that has been cleaned behind. Pretty impressive. Grills, brush, pan, and uh, yeah, some firewood and stuff. And there is actually the chimney for it. And there is actually room up the top. You can go up there. Now, I'm not going to do that because it's just pitch black and you won't see anything. But this one is actually, this uh, refuge is actually uh, quoted as having five places. So we've got the bunk beds there, double bunk beds. And there's actually a triple bunk bed set up here. Now, the top one actually has two mattresses on it. Someone's brought an extra mattress. And uh, believe it or not, up the top here... When you go up there, it is well insulated, but there is room to put down mattresses and sleep extra people. So, so you can see it's all really nicely set up. There's covers, pillows, more covers, more covers, and it's all nice and clean. People have cleaned behind the floors, not a mess. I made it a mess there, but I'll, I'll tidy that up after. So the other thing as well is it's been set up, there's a table here, this is sort of table associated with viewpoints in various places around the Alps, and over past the door again, another little table for whatever, presumably that's for outside, take it outside, it's smaller than the door, considerably narrower than the door. So on the left here we've got cleaning materials, we've got a light, we've got uh, salt, pepper, We've got matches, we've got uh, so I think a powdered soup, uh, various other things, more paper, some uh, elastoplast type things, a couple of packs of spaghetti, uh, someone even, a uh, Paul, um, that's a flower thing. Someone who died here, near here recently, or 2016, and you can see here, in the Vallon, Ripos, Rests, Paul, I think he was buried here, or his ashes were spread here or something. So uh, there's a lot of mountain stuff here, a lot of mountain feeling, a lot of mountain everything. Playing cards, a little game of something. Now there used to be, um, there used to be a, uh, a visitor's book here, but it seems to have gone, whether someone's burnt it or stolen it or whether the local authorities haven't actually put it out for the tourists yet because they're not quite in the summer season. So this is how it's equipped. Now what I'm doing today is, I, apart from bringing up wood and chopping wood and getting it all ready to go, because it's one thing if you need to come here rapidly, you don't have to go getting the stuff. So it's quite sparse for it. If I head outside, I'll show you the situation. It's never locked. The keyhole is blocked, obviously, to stop drafts and things. So, looking at the state of the building, it is absolutely minted. Really well maintained. Back to the wind again, I'm afraid. Going past round. But at the back here, this is new since the last time I was here. And this is actually storage for wood. So I'm going to fill that up today. And it's going to take a bit of work, but I've got all day. And coming back round again, you can see the roof's pretty new. It's not an old roof, it's very weather resistant. And you can even see some steps and things going up the side here, where it used to have a, a, an access hatch to the loft, but obviously they've built that into the ceiling when they've redone the ceiling. Because a lot of this wood isn't old, it's, it's, it's all new. So that's... Uh, <laughs> wow, you can still see the hinges for the original door up there as well. So, uh, the stuff I've brought today, um, I've brought a few things. I'm going to go over that once I've actually put them inside the building here. A pipe, it's running around here, running around there, and then it goes shooting away. It disappears up the rocks ahead of me there and just to the right and away over and that actually goes a fair old distance up and it's siphoned from a rock pool an underground rock pool in one of the caves around the corner now this stops running the siphon gets interrupted or it gets damaged or disconnected uh, anything can happen but it's not running just now I dare say that'll get repaired and what happens is that the 
sort of comes out of there, it goes down the first trough, down the second trough, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So you can see the water trough just above it, you can see where those marmots were, pink blue behind it. Lots of clouds and storms coming in. And just walking back up here, back up to so just at the top of the hill in the sun. This is a lovely little seat area in that rock. Egg the sack, so shouldn't really be here, but how am I going to carry stuff up? Outside fire, log to sit on. This is uh, one of the dead trees I've been bringing up and cutting into pieces that are usable so that everything is immediately available should someone need it. Now, the water thing, it's all very well having water down there, but you need it here. So I've brought up six five litre plastic bottles of water, 30 litres. Starter for 10, and it's also something that you can use to carry the fresh water from down the bottom up here. It's actually remarkably quiet and warm in here. Uh, it's quite comfortable. So anyway, I'm going to rattle around, quickly show you all the stuff that I've brought. And then I'm going to explain why I've brought this stuff, why I'm doing this. And that will be the, the video for today. So here goes a little look around all the stuff. It's all stuff that... We cannot use in our residence back in uh, Lazar stuff that's been left behind by clients, by staff, and stuff that I've provided. Um, what else? That's basically it. Stuff that we just cannot use, and it's destined for the bin, so why bin it when it can be used somewhere like this? Here we go. So I bought an old saw. It still works quite well, but I've got five or six back home. Don't really need this one. So I brought it along. Didn't know what was here. More the merrier. I've repaired this, glued it all together again, this dustpan and brush. Can't present to the clients. Might as well bring it here. Now, this was for the uh, dispensers at the swimming pool. When I used to manage the swimming pool, I've had that a couple of years now. Don't need it. Bring it here couple of old cloths that clients have left behind. I did actually, <laughs> I just remembered, I brought these just for, why not? <laughs> yeah, over here, there's the bottles all nicely laid out and just going round. An old pan here, you can see the state of it, it's knackered, it's all, the, the Teflon's gone in it. Same with this pan, Teflon's all gone. They were going for the bin. This one, slight corrosion effect at the bottom, it still works, but we can't present that to clients. Same here, this has been through the wash so often, through the dishwasher, it's got black stuff in it. And also it's chipped, chipped, and these mugs have been through the wash, that one's cracked to bugger at the bottom and they're really not usable. I've got, I've got another one with me but I'm using that myself for my coffee. I'm going to have lunch when I've done all this. Brought some lighters, got them all working. They'll do fine for lighting stuff in case the matches get damp. Pens and pencils, you never know. People might want to write stuff, hopefully not on the walls. Again, plates, cracks and they're just old. This has got, it's just, yeah cracked around the edges and stuff. Usable but not presentable to clients. Some hot chocolate that I uh, used to get in food packs. Don't really need them. Uh, I've got stacks of them at home. I've put some sugar of my own in. Sugar cubes in a sealed bag. Tea bags in a sealed bag. I've got some coffee there as well, just a little bit. Uh, washing up liquid, vinegar, wine, wine, vinegar of wine. Vinegar's brilliant. If you get, uh, for me, if you get any stings, bites, be it snakes, be it wasps, whatever, stick that on it. It'll hurt like buggery for half an hour, but I'll tell you, it'll stop the effects of it, especially if you're like me and you've got an allergy for these things. Rubbish bags, yeah, encourage it. Packet of spaghetti, sealed. Couple of sponges from my kitchen, yeah, why not? An old uh, can opener thing, whatever, it's rusty and corroded and old, that's going to go for the bin. Same with these spoons, old wooden cooking stuff, they're all brown and black and everything. Yeah, <laughs> chuck them out, no, chuck them here. These were left by uh, staff, who obviously like the old flashly beans. 
Flies live out beans. I've got a few uh, cups from the the Moto Stunt event from last year, the year before. Uh, why not? Herbs de Provence. These are uh, like French equivalent of Oxo cubes. Why not? Herbs, bas basil, some salt, and in here some old knives and stuff. Which really, it's all the old stuff. It's, it's crap. We cannot present that to clients. These knives, you know, that one's bent at the end and everything, but it's usable here. One or two of them, semi sharp, but that should do the job here. And in here, critical element, little candle thingies. These are brilliant. You can light fires with them. If you want to light this fire here, light that underneath, put some kindling on it, and then put the big stuff on top when that catches. And if nothing else, it's a bit of light in the evenings. I've got stacks of them, why not? I'm going to leave these bags as well. Uh, people probably need to find a use for them too. And hopefully the spirit of this will carry on because this is the stuff up here. As I say, matches and whatnot. Uh, there's plastic cups or whatever. I wouldn't be happy with that. I'd prefer to wash these and there's plenty of water to do it with now. And for these beds as well, I brought along three of these covers. They're torn at the edges. They're frayed. Not presentable to clients. These are destined for the bin. What I've done is this last week, I've put them through the industrial washing machine we've got down the road, or along the road <laughs> in Lazor, and I've folded them up neatly after I've dried them and everything. They're all ready to go. I've got two up there, but I'm going to use the other one, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the stuff on here, and then I'll pull that over to cover it to keep damp and dust and flies and things off it all. Not going to be driving for a while, because I'm going to be bringing up some more of them trees. So, yeah. Cheers. Now, my school motto, I can't remember the Latin because I was rubbish at Latin, but it translated to never unprepared. There we go. So yeah, that's what I've done. Why did I do it? The first part of this video shows you just the beauty and the splendour Maybe on a day like this without blue skies, not in its best, but it's still spectacular when the um, when the weather's pretty rough. So it just, it's a mountain thing, it's a mountain attitude, it's a mountain way of life to share and to prepare and just pre never unprepared. It, it, it's, it's what I was taught at school. So... Basically that's it. Uh, I've come up here, I do this now and again, it's the third time I've come up here. It's my third car, I came up here with my Renault 5, then a couple of years later I came up here with my Peugeot 205. And now I've come up with Equus Axel, and just to, to share the goodness, to share the well-being, to share this place. And it's a fantastic place to spend the day. This is the last effective day before I go back to work, apart from the weekend, whatever. But it's just a fantastic situation, a fantastic thing to do. It's not an altruistic thing, it's a sharing thing. And that's what it's about. And I actually noticed one thing just now, which uh, I'll just show you just at the end here. And that is the, the bag that... Uh, I broke one of my tripods, by the way. Uh, the bag that I'm actually leaving stuff in... It's pretty neat. This was not intentional. This is just something I've noticed as I've laid the bag out. That translates to what is mine is also that of my friends. We share everything. I love it. It says it all. So anyway, I'm going to get on with my lunch here. I'm going to have this beer. I've got some pre-mixed coffee. I'll leave that behind. I've got this other cup and teaspoon, I'll clean them, I'll leave them behind as well. I'll take my flask with me though because it's pretty neat. So, uh, and that's it, I've got my crisps, I'll bin that in the car, in the bin that I have in the car, and everything is hunky-dory. So, I'm going to get on with lunch here, and because uh, I'm pretty hungry, I actually left the house at half past four this morning, got here about twenty past six, and uh, been pretty active with stuff. I'm going to go down and get a few more of these old broken trees and stuff. Come up here, chop them up, get them all laid out, get everything finally cleaned up. Shut the shutters, shut the door, 
put the thing back on the door there and leave. So that's it. That's today's exercise. I'm loving this. This is fantastic fun. Just something to do. There's no virus here. There's no people here. There's no prime ministers here. There's no presidents here. There's no demonstrations here. There's no, for want of a better way of putting it, I don't swear that often on this channel, there's no shite here. Perfect. Hope you've liked this video. I've loved doing it. This is a fantastic day out for me. And uh, remember you can subscribe down there and click on the old uh, thumbs up. Click on the thumbs down if you like, but I don't know why anyone would dislike this one. And uh, remember you can, once you've subscribed, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It's good for you. It's good for me. Once you do that, click on the notification bell for alerts for future uploads from Max Mountain World. And also make comments, please. The feedback so, so much appreciated. So until the next video, goodness knows what it's going to be. It was going to be one with these mountain goats that I explained. Not going to do that today. I'll do that some other time. So until the next one, thanks again for watching. Ciao.